Today's story is about Samson. No, just kidding. That was an illustration. Samson's the strongest guy in the Bible. Often we're confused. Either, you know, people think, wait, is that Samson or is that Pastor Garen? No, it's just me. It's just me. Happy Mother's Day, everybody. <laughs> I love it. Well, that was not quite the way I was going to start. Here's how I was going to start. <laughs> Editing spot. She was sick and tired of being bullied at church. That took a different turn, didn't it? For years, she endured verbal abuse, and it was for something that was beyond her control. So, of course, this affected her self-esteem, which affected her marriage, and it even affected her worship. The, the, the bullying just led her to great despair, and desperate times call for desperate measures. You want to know what happens next? Stick around. Today I want to talk to you about the heart of dedication. And the story that, we, that I'll be reading is, is from, uh, referring to as in 1 Samuel 1 in the Bible. But if you want to, you could put your finger there. But would you turn to Romans chapter 12, verses 1 to 2? That's, that's what I'd love to have you look at. We'll, we'll come back to that in just a moment. Romans 12, 1 to 2. Have you ever totally poured yourself into reaching a goal or reaching, you know, like establishing a cause or even reaching a person? Have you ever just poured everything you have into a certain thing? Maybe like think back, maybe you worked nights and weekends to put yourself through college. Or maybe you took your whole vacation to put in your yard or remodel your bathroom or something like that. Like you just poured everything into it. Or maybe you practiced every single day until you can consistently sink those free throw shots. Or execute that magic trick, coin from your ear. Or uh, to, to run a marathon. Like all these things, they just take a lot of effort and a lot of focus to be able to do it. One of the things I'm focusing on right now is learning Spanish. And so one of the, one of the cool things I've been doing recently that's sort of new for me is I've been listening to worship songs in Spanish. And they are so beautiful. I found some, some artists, Latino artists, that, oh, I just love them so much. My favorite song right now is on repeat, Espíritu de Dios, Spirit of God. And it's just this prayer that God would come and by His Holy Spirit and breathe in us again, sopla otra vez, that He would just come and infuse us with life and with power. And I've gotten to the place where I can actually worship along with, with that song. Uh, because I am pouring myself into it, I'm listening to it, I'm focusing on it. It's amazing what can happen when you focus and devote yourself to something. And today we're talking about the heart of dedication. We're talking about that kind of focus. But back to our story. So the woman that I was talking about earlier, her name is Hannah. You may have heard about her, but if not, she was a Jewish woman who lived many centuries before Jesus. She had a struggle. She was infertile. She was not able to have children. Now, it was complicated because her husband Elkanah had a second wife named Panina. Not like, this is, that was my first wife and now it's my second wife. Two wives. And in that culture, uh, we do not do this today, but in that culture it was sort of common because women did not work outside of the home. And so uh, the, a man, a lot of times, he would take more than one wife to be able to provide for them, protect them, and all that kind of thing. It, 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 it was a custom of that day. It's not something we do today, but imagine all the myriad of struggles and problems that would come along with that. And it was even worse because Panina, Hannah's husband's other wife had many children. So she had no children. The, the, what's, the, what's that show? The good wife had. <laughs> no, I think Hannah was the good wife. The other wife had many children. And so Panina, the other wife, she used it to be mean to Hannah. She taunted her, the Bible says. Well, it's not very often you hear that word. Han, uh, 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 Panina taunted, mocked, made fun of, belittled Hannah because Hannah didn't have any kids. And once a year, this good Jewish family 
would travel from their home, pack up the kids, the donkeys, as everything, take this long trip to go to the, the town of Shiloh, where the house of God was, where people worshiped the Lord. And when they would get there, the, the custom of the day, people would bring an animal to sacrifice to the Lord. So today we bring our tithes. They brought an animal, which was their way of saying, God, thank you for everything you've given us. We give a part of it back to you. And then, I know this might sound crazy, but they would have a sacrificial meal. So they would bring this bull, bring this goat, bring this lamb, whatever, and the priests and the other temple workers, they would get uh, a portion to feed them. And the family who brought it would get a, por a portion to eat, to eat there. And what they did, they were eating in the presence of the Lord. It's a really very cool uh, symbolic thing, but they were worshiping as a family and part of their worship was sacrificing an animal, and then they roasted that, they ate that in the Lord's presence. They said, God, you've given it to us, we give it back to you, and we all enjoy it. God, you enjoy the, the smell of the, the smoke going up to you, of the barbecue, and we, we enjoy it as well. Like, God is the first barbecuer, you know? Like, <laughs> he loves that smell, and so do I. I am the barbecuer of our family. So what would happen at the sacrificial meal, they're supposed to be there to worship. And Panina would say, look it, I got a lot more than you do, Hannah. I got a big portion here because I got a big family to feed. Oh, I see you have none. That's why you have that little meal there. And she would just put her down. You are worthless. You are nothing. You're bad. You are, you are, you are the worst, the lowest of the low. At the place of worship. And so Hannah would sink into a dark depression it was just more than she could bear. And in that society, there was a bit of that, that thinking, but then Panina just had to rub it in and, and make it worse. Her husband tried to encourage her, tried to pull her out of depression, but Hannah refused. Like, I will not be comforted. <laughs> well, finally, one year, Hannah left that sacrificial meal where all the family's supposed to be together and worshiping the Lord, enjoying this meal together. Hannah left to go to the, play, to the place of prayer in the house of the Lord. So she goes in there uh, to, just like, I got to be my, by myself and pray. So I, I want to read a few verses sp specifically from that story. 1 Samuel 1, verses 10 and 11. Hannah was in deep anguish, crying bitterly as she prayed to the Lord. And she made this vow. I talked about vows earlier a few weeks ago. O Lord of heaven's armies, if you will look upon my sorrow and answer my prayer and give me a son, then I will give him back to you. He will be yours for his entire lifetime. And as a sign that he has been dedicated to the Lord, his hair will never be cut. Now, I could, there's a whole big thing. Like it, was a, it was a symbolic thing of a, of a person's life who was set apart to the Lord that they would never cut their hair. In fact, Samson, <gasps> full circle, comes right back to us. Samson never cut his hair, and that's why we did that earlier. <laughs> totally planned. Totally, absolutely, yes. So Hannah only ever wanted one thing. One thing. She wanted to be a mom. That's it. Like, she didn't ask for any other possessions, treasures, nothing else. I just want to be a mom. That was the one thing. She prayed. She strategized. She lit some candles and put on the Kenny G. She did everything that she knew <laughs> to have a child. And nothing. Like, it was, it was the one, it was her one focus. She just wanted a child. She yearned for that child. And she was so focused and so devoted that she made the ultimate sacrifice. She said, God, if you will give me that child, then I will give him back to you. And she said, I will give him to your service for his whole lifetime. So she's in that house, that, that house of the Lord, in, in the house of the Lord at Shiloh. She's praying, and she's so in anguish, but she doesn't want anyone to know what she's praying about. So she's just like, her lips are moving, She's in anguish, but no, no sounds coming out. Well, Eli was the priest, and uh, he was on duty, and he saw her, and he accused her he, he, of being drunk in church. Must you come to church drunk, he said to her. But Hannah stood up for herself. Good job, Hannah. And she explained she was not drunk, only very discouraged. 
down in verse 16 and 17, she said, I've been praying out of great anguish and sorrow. In that case, Eli said, go in peace. And may the God of Israel grant the request you have asked of him. So cool. And if you, if, uh, you may have asked me for different prayer requests at different times. And I often think of Eli. And I've said to some of you, may God grant your request. It's a biblical, prophetic thing uh, full of faith to say over a person. Really cool. They returned home, Hannah and her family. And before long, God answered her prayer with a little miracle baby whom they named Samuel, a very significant name. It means heard by God. So every time she looks at her little baby, she says, God, answer my prayer. God, answer my prayer. Come in, God, answer my prayer. It's time for dinner. That's so cool. And that's just, that's the kind of thing a mom does. And so as soon as he was weaned, uh, uh, she, uh, Hannah and Elkanah, her husband, took Samuel to the house of the Lord to give him to Eli the priest. For Samuel 1, 27, 28, she said, I asked the Lord to give me this boy, and he has granted my request. Now I am giving him to the Lord, and he will belong to the Lord his whole life. And they worshiped the Lord there. I'm guessing she stayed at that sacrificial meal. Hannah gave up the one, the one thing, like the thing. She gave up the one thing she'd prayed for for years, her baby boy. I was, I, I was trying to think of some, some things like that that we pray for. It, it would be sort of like praying and praying and praying that God would finally let you buy your first house. And as soon as you get the keys, you give those keys to somebody else. It would be like that. It'd be like praying and praying and praying, oh God, please, I want to get married, please, I beg you, bring me a spouse, I want to get married. And then on your wedding day, you say the vows, and then you send him or her as a missionary to Southeast Asia by themselves. It'd be like that, like the one thing she wanted, the one thing she prayed for, she got it, and she gave him away. Wow. Uh, for, for her, that meant giving him, like, he was no longer going to live at her house. They had, remember, they had to travel to get to Shiloh, so she leaves him in Shiloh with the priest. But for her, it was an honor. It was, it was a joy to give him back to the Lord because she was so grateful to the Lord for answering her prayer. In Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, Paul, who is one of the early church leaders, wrote, and so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies, and this, this term in this context means I, I plead with you to give your whole selves. It'd be sort of like saying, hey, let's, let's find out how many people are here. Let's count noses. Well, noses represent people, and that's, that's what Paul is saying here. I plead with you to give your bodies, give your whole self to God because of all he has done for you. Let, let your whole selves be a living and holy sacrifice We've been talking about sacrifices today. A sacrifice is something you burn up and, and give to God. So it's an offering presented to God. So Paul's saying, I plead with you, give yourself as a living sacrifice to God, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the spiritual, or rational, the, the immaterial way to worship him. Uh, other translations say, this is your spiritual worship, or this is your reasonable service. In the Amplified Bible, uh, another translation of the Bible, it says, it says it this way, same verse. I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, and beg of you, in view of all the mercies of God, to make a decisive dedication of your bodies. In other words, presenting all you are, all your members and faculty, as a living sacrifice. Holy, that means devoted, consecrated, and well-pleasing to God, which is your reasonable, your rational, intelligent service and your spiritual worship. Really very cool. Paul's saying, I plead with you, just think about all that God's done for you and you will want to give your whole self to God when you really realize all he has done. Uh, think about what God's done for you. Are you breathing? I'm guessing that if you're here, most likely you are. God gave you that breath. So literally, you think of it, God has given you everything. He's given you life, health, breath, a family, a church, 
and you are part of a family. Even if you feel alone, you, you have a family that you can be a part of in the family of God. It all comes from God, your creator. And, and that, we hope, would make us just well up in gratitude. Hannah, Hannah could not have children, but she prayed for a son, and God said yes. She was so grateful to God that she dedicated her one and only son to God. Now, we don't have time to go into the whole story, but he grew up to be a great leader in Israel. That He was the spiritual leader of Israel when he grew up. And he was uh, uh, instrumental in, in leading people back to God and pointing people in of his whole nation back to God. He even influenced kings, the first kings uh, of Israel, everything. Like he is a very, he, he grew up really to be used by God. Years later, God sent his one and only son. And God the Father dedicated Jesus to you. Isn't that cool? God loved you so much that he gave his one and only son to die for your sins on the cross in your place so that you could inherit eternal life. While you were yet sinners, Christ died for you. That is dedication and devotion. God the Father and God the Son to you and to me. If I could say, like, what's, what's, how would you summarize this message? Put it in just one sentence. It's this. It's a joy to, de- to dedicate your whole life to Jesus, knowing that he poured out his whole life for you. It's a joy. When you realize all he's given to you, it's a joy to make him first. It's a joy to pour out your life to him. So I have a question for you to think of about. You don't have to answer. You don't have to raise, raise your hand. But is Jesus your daily devotion Or is he just your Sunday diversion? What place does Jesus have in your life? Is Jesus the center of your life? Or is he just an add-on to your life? You know, add-ons, it's like, yeah, if I have time, great. If not, whatever. Center is, no, it's, that's going to happen. Like, eating is pretty central. It's going to happen. You know what I mean? Even, even if you're tired, even if you have a long day, at midnight you're going to eat dinner. Like, because you're, I mean, at least I am. <laughs> but when something's the center of your life, you think about it daily. You, you invest in it daily. Is Jesus the center of your life, or is he just an add-on to your life? In other words, are you dedicated to God? Are you dedicated to him? We've already established God is dedicated to you. Are you dedicated to God? So here's our action step today. I want to do this just a little bit differently than normal. Would you just consider, maybe write a note in your phone, or if you're taking notes, write write a note. Consider what would it take for you to get to the place where you love God so much and you are so grateful that you want to dedicate your whole life to God, as well as the people and the things that you love most to God. What would it take? So when I look at my life, when, when, I, I, when you look at your life, I, I think sometimes we might be surprised. We, we say, we might even sing, Jesus be the center of my life. We might say that, but is Jesus the 24-7 center of your life? Are you dedicated to Jesus? Hannah dedicated her baby to the Lord. She faithfully brought him to the house of the Lord, and she trusted his care and his calling to God. Today, three sets of parents have registered to dedicate their babies or their little ones to the Lord. So I'm going to ask those three families, would you come now and just bring your family. You can bring your extended family if you want. And we'll just ask you to just be right here in the front facing me. All right? So maybe uh, parents with the kids come, come in the closest. And if, if extended family want to come and stand behind you, that it's totally, you're totally welcome to do that. I would love that. I encourage that. And face me, if you, go, if you would. I'm going to talk to you guys first. So come face me. And uh, let's move you over here. And then decans are coming also. Awesome. Um, uh, Tony and Martha are bringing Damien. Matias Rosales. I love it. So cute. <laughs> and Zach and Andrea are bringing J- uh, James. I, I, I have another J word coming up, so I almost messed it up. James Richard Garrett. 
Yes. And uh, Sarah, Pastor, uh, Sarah, Pastor Christian and Sarah are bringing Claire Elizabeth and Daniel Joseph. There was my other J. Now all of a sudden, I, oh, wait, which J? Okay, Daniel Joseph and James Richard. So let's have the decans. Why don't you come, kind of come over this way and then you guys in the middle. There we go. Awesome. And face me. Face me, families, if you would. And then in, uh, later, we'll have you face guardians. But face me for a moment. All right. And if there are any photographers, any family photographers, come get where you need to go. Like, if you need to stand over there, get their faces, whatever you got to do, all right? And then in a little bit, I'm going to bring each family on the stage with me. So, but photographers, come, I, I, don't miss a moment, man. Come on up, grab your iPhones, let's go, let's do it. Awesome. All right. So, we're doing things a little bit different today than we have done in the past, and I, it's kind of cool. This is a first. This is kind of a monumental day. This is our first baby dedications since the pandemic. This is our first baby dedications in our new facility so it's really cool that in the new season for our church, we're dedicating your kids to the Lord. I love that. This is a very significant and special moment. And uh, all three of you are close friends of mine, all three couples, all three families. This is a great honor for me. I'm, I'm really pumped that we get to do this. All right. So parents, we're, and it's okay if there's a little fussiness. I, I get it. I get it. No problem. Parents, we're, we're dedicating yourselves to raise your child for the Lord, as well as dedicating your children to the Lord. So I'm going to ask you guys four questions. And uh, parents, if you are willing, would you say we will? Okay, after each question. Okay, so I, and I'll, I'll just point you. I'll, I'll help you figure this out. Okay, so number one, will you dedicate your child to the Lord, and will you give him or her back to the Lord? Will you? Good job. Nice. Will you teach your child at home to follow Jesus just as you do? Good. Will you faithfully bring your children to the house of the Lord for worship? We will. Awesome. And you already are. Will you pray for your child and ultimately trust your child's care and calling to the Lord? Will you? Awesome. That is so great. I love it. Now, they are not the only ones being dedicated today. Church, would you stand to your feet? We, as a church, are also dedicating ourselves as a church to support these families as they raise their, their kids to follow Jesus. So church, I'm going to ask you uh, three questions. If you're willing, will you answer each question? We will. All right? So number one, will you personally, as it says in 1 Timothy, will you personally be an example to these children in what you say, in the way you live, in your love, your faith, and your purity? Will you, church? We will. We will, we will be an example to these kids. I love it. Now here's a harder one. Will you take your turn serving either in our regular kids' ministries, so nursery, kids' church, stuff like that, or in annual or irregular ministries such as Kids Camp, BBS? You could be a registrar, you could be a camp leader, you could be a cook. Will you take your turn serving in kids' ministries? Will you? Good. We will. Amen. We got it on camera. We'll talk to you after service. And finally, church, will you support these parents as they raise their kids for Jesus? We will. All right. It is a joy to dedicate your whole life to Jesus, knowing that he poured out his whole life for you. It's a joy even to take your turn to support, to be an example. All those things, they're joys. So one family at a time, I'm going to start with Tony and Martha. Uh, why don't you guys come on uh, up on the stage and right over here, uh, I think this would be easier. Uh, yeah, uh, well, okay, yeah, yes. Go ahead and be seated. Awesome. Good. And that way uh, cameras will be able to see a little better and everything too. Good. So now face the people. Awesome. So Tony and Martha, I really have enjoyed getting to know you. And we, I, I said I would put on my mask for this part for the kiddos. Um, let me do that real quick. I think I did it. Good. I have enjoyed getting to know you guys. And, and we really have spent quite a bit of time together over the past couple years. I, I've, I've watched you grow in your walk with the Lord, both of you. I, I've seen you go through trials and stay faithful to the Lord. And I, I've enjoyed watching you grow as a couple, watching you grow as parents. And all those things, it's, it's really cool to just be a part of that journey with you. I love you guys. I love your family. 
and a level of Damien. I don't know that Damien's going to let me hold him, so we, I might just uh, leave him where, where we are, and that'll be just fine. Let, would you pray with me? And uh, let, let's pray. For, and, and it'd be cool, church, if you just raise your hand. It's sort of a prophetic gesture. Say, we're blessing him. All right, so let's pray for, for a little Damien, okay? Lord, I thank you so much for Damien. I thank you for who he is. I thank you for how you created him. Lord, when we, when we look at Damien, we see you. We see you in him. He is made in the image of God. Thank you for that, Lord God. And Lord, this morning, this family, uh, we, uh, Tony and Martha and their family, we bring Damien to you and we present him to you. Lord, we acknowledge you gave him to them. And Lord, we give him back to you, Lord. For however you want to, to call him, Lord God, we just pray that he would be, uh, uh, as he grows up, that he would be a man, uh, a teenager, a man who chooses Jesus for himself. We know that this moment does not save his soul. This is a moment of giving him back to you and acknowledging you. We pray that he would choose Jesus for himself. I, I pray, Lord God, that you would help him, Lord God, to, to uh, be a person who points others to Jesus. Lord God, I pray that he would be a, a source of strength to his parents and to his family. And Lord God, we just say this is a child, this is a person who loves Jesus. We declare that over him. Lord, we bless him. And in, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, in the nombre del Padre y el Hijo y el Espíritu Santo, we dedicate him to you, Lord. He is yours. Lord, I pray that you would help Tony and Martha as they raise him to follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Good job. He did it. So I'll let you go ahead and go down here. And Pastor Shelley has for you a certificate to remember this day and a book uh, for, for uh, you as parents just to help you in raising the child. All right? Awesome. And then Zach and Andrea, I want you to come on up. And I, I should have helped her. I don't know if you need a hand. Yeah, there's no handrails. Oh, don't tell OSHA. <laughs> okay, good. Awesome. Good. Now, now this, is, this is really cool. This, I, I had the privilege of, of dedicating Johnny a while back. And this is James. So uh, those of you who are Bible scholars, you know that combination of, of John and James. They are the sons of thunder. That's right. And it's so cool. This is, this is little James Richard, and he's brother of John, just like in the Bible. Those were uh, the two guys that were in Jesus' closest circle. And I think there's something prophetic about that, that we're saying these two guys are going to be close with Jesus, intimate with Jesus. But also... As a son of thunder, that we're, we're believing that little James, as he's, he's who we're focusing on today, is going to be a person who stands up for Jesus in the marketplace. That he is one who would point others to Jesus, even if he is like a salmon swimming upstream at times. Uh, with culture going the other way, he's going to be going towards Jesus. So well, we're going to dedicate him to the Lord, and I think he will let me take him. Did pretty good earlier. Hey, buddy. Hi. You got your banana? That's good. Awesome. Photo moment. Oh, so cute. I love it. So great. Well, let's pray a prayer of dedication uh, for little James Richard. All right? Lord, I just thank you so much for James. And Lord, I thank you that he is a gift and that even his name is prophetic. Lord, I, I thank you for his life. And Lord, we just bless him and we dedicate little James Richard Garrett to the Lord. Lord, I, I just pray, Lord, that, that he would be a person who makes his own choices to follow Jesus, that he puts his faith in you at an early age and never has to wander. Lord God, I pray that he would be one that uh, starts pointing his little, his little elementary school kids to Jesus. Lord, I pray that he would pray for others and that they would be healed. Lord, I pray that you would help him, Lord God, that you would uh, just uh, let his calling be ordained by you, whether that's in full-time ministry or, or doing something else, Lord God. I pray wherever he is, he would serve you, Lord God. And uh, Lord, we just bless him. We thank you for him, Lord God, and we dedicate him to you. Lord, thank you for this gift. We give this gift back to you. Now, I pray, Lord, that you'd help Zach and Andrea as they raise this child, this son, and, and their family to follow Jesus, Lord. I pray you'd supply all of their needs in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So good. I love it. 
Okay, Mom. We'll give him back to you. He did it. I surprised everybody by saying we're going to do this at the end of the service. So the kids, they're doing so great just to even get this even this far. And then Shelly has the book and certificate for you as well. Okay, you got this. You're welcome. Awesome. Very good. And the cans are coming as well. Come on up. And uh, could, you, could I just snag a microphone real quick? Do you have one nearby? Awesome. And uh, Pastor Christian, uh, you told me why you waited till this time to dedicate to both kids. Would you mind just uh, reminding us of that? Yeah. So we, Sarah and I, had multiple opportunities at churches that I was interning in. Um, but we just felt on our, on our heart that the place that we wanted to dedicate our children um, was the place that we wanted to call our, our church home. And so we had patiently waited, and we were just so just so blessed, and we feel just so confirmed every single day we spend with you guys that this is our home. This is our church home. And so for us, this is a, this is a moment of, yeah. 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 yeah so this good. is just a moment of dedication. Yeah, amen, amen, good. Um, uh, one other thing just to mention, has nothing to do with dedication, but I want to say congratulations to Pastor Christian who he has been working on his credentialing with the Assemblies of God, the National Assemblies of God, and uh, since, since he came almost, almost a year ago. And we finally received his certificate and card. Now, I think we've got a picture of that to show you uh, uh, this last week. So congratulations. It's so great. It, it was a big step. It, it actually, uh, he actually had more work to do than others because he has his MDiv, which is a, a ministerial degree, but it wasn't from an AG school. And so they put him through the ringer <laughs> and, and you did it. And I'm proud of you. I'm, I'm, I'm really happy about that. So I want to pray a prayer of dedication over both kids. And I think I'm not going to hold Claire. I think I'll just put my, I'll just come nearby, but we're buddies, right? Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I'm going to pray for you, Claire. We're going to pray and talk to Jesus, okay? Would you just extend your hand as well? And uh, Lord, we just lift up a little Claire Elizabeth to you, Lord God. She is a gift from God. We see you in her. Lord, we thank you for her, Lord. And Lord, I, I just thank you for the way she is. She is awesome in every way, Lord God. And Lord, I, I pray, Lord, that, uh, that as she grows up, Lord God, that, that her creativity would be uh, focused to bring glory and honor to you, Lord God. Uh, Lord God, I pray that her inquisitiveness that I see in her, her curiosity about life, uh, Lord, I, I pray that she would invent something amazing uh, that would help other people, Lord God. Lord, I pray, Lord, that she, would be, uh, that she would make her own choice to follow Jesus and that she would be faithful to you all the days of her life, Lord God. And, and so in Jesus' name, Lord, we just dedicate Claire Elizabeth to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh. Woo. Yay. They all love you, Claire. And, let, and let's take a little Danny. He has no choice. <laughs> he can do it. Yeah. He'll come. I love it. We got midriff showing here. Like, there we go. Okay. All right. And, and let's, let's pray again. If you extend your hands, let's, let's pray again. Uh, for little Daniel Joseph. Lord, I thank you for this family. Lord, I thank you right now for, for Daniel Joseph, Lord. I thank you that he is a gift from you and that we see you in, in him. And Lord, uh, this morning, we just bring him to you and their parents dedicate him to Jesus. And so, Lord, we together dedicate Daniel Joseph to you, Lord. We thank you for him. And Lord, I just pray that you would help him to make his own choice to follow Jesus. Lord, I pray that he would put his faith in you. Lord, I pray that he would be a person that points others to Jesus. Lord, I pray that you would protect him uh, through life's ups, ups and downs. And, and that, Lord God, he would, uh, he would see you at work in his life, that he would trust you. Yes, no matter what happens, Lord. And, and Lord, I pray for this family, Lord, that you would help them as they raise their kids, Lord God, even when it's nap time and it's lunch time and it's stressful, you be their peace, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We did it. <laughs> there you go.
awesome. We've got the certificates, one for each child. Oh my goodness. And that is one of the reasons I love baby dedication. You just never know what's going to happen. <laughs> and honestly, I, I, think, I think she is doing great under the circumstances. <laughs> so anybody that's a parent, say amen. Yeah. Yes. She waited till the end of service, right when it's nap time and food time, and she came on up here. So good job. We, we love our families. We love babies. We love dedicating children to the Lord. We, we're just a very happy church right now. So happy. And I think I could take this off if I can figure out how. There we go. Did I do it? Okay, great. Awesome. Good. Whew. Well, it's a joy to dedicate your whole life to Jesus, knowing he's poured out his whole life for you. Amen? That, that's where the joy comes from. And if you aren't experiencing that joy, I just want to encourage you to meditate on all that God has done for you. You may have some real struggles. Our family, we've got some struggles. We do. But we have the Lord. And we're not alone in those struggles. He's walking with us and taking us through it. So that, that's very joyful. Would you stand to your feet, everybody, if you're in the room, online? We're going to get ready to pray. And would you just kind of focus in? And let's, let's, let's just talk to the Lord for a moment. Would you bow your heads with me, please? Bow your heads. And I just want to invite you to put your faith in Jesus. If you've not done that, or if you did it a long time ago and you kind of wandered away, I want to invite you to put your faith in Jesus, to become his apprentice. That's where you, excuse me, you follow him, you learn from him, you talk with him, you imitate him. That's what an apprentice does as you learn the life of following God. So I, I, I want to invite you to put your faith in Jesus. How do you do that? Turn from your sins. Turn your life over to God and let him lead. Just, just start there. Everything else in due time. Just start there. Would you like to do that today? Maybe some of you family members, uh, maybe first time guests, maybe long time uh, members of, of the church. You've, you've come a long time. Maybe this is your day to put your faith in Jesus. I want to invite you to do that. Every head bowed. If today you'd like to put your faith in Jesus, would you just raise your hand? As a signal to me, yeah, pastor, I'm doing that today. Would you pray for me? Because today's my day. I want to put my faith in Jesus, become his apprentice today. Yeah, I see that. That's awesome, man. Are there others? Cool. Online, would you raise your hand to God? I'd love to coach you in a prayer. So a couple things are going to happen. I'm just going to say a line and ask you to repeat after me, but say it to God. Don't say it to me, all right? Uh, Christians are doing two things. They're praying for those putting their faith in Jesus, and they're, they're memorizing this prayer so that you're ready at the lunch table, you're ready at the supermarket to lead someone in this prayer, all right? So uh, let's, let's pray together. I'll, I'll start. If, you're, if you raise your hand today, if you're making that uh, decision today, you say it to God. Here we go. Ready? Jesus, I invite you into my life. I choose to follow you all the days of my life. Please forgive me of my sins. I want to be your apprentice. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And if you prayed that simple prayer, I know it's a simple prayer, but that's how it begins. That's how it begins. And I just want to encourage you to take a step. Tell someone that you know, hey, I prayed that prayer today. And would you just do this? Would you take out your phone right now and text the word restart because you're restarting your life following Jesus. Text restart to the phone number 97000. And that will tell me that you prayed that prayer today because I'd like to be able to pray for you this coming week as well. All right? Man, thank you for being here, everybody. What a great Mother's Day together. Yes, yes. We packed a service today with some awesomeness. Amen. And, you know, I'm going to be chewing on what Pastor brought to us is Jesus Center, our number one, the focus. And let's, as we go through our week, keep that in mind. Amen. Amen. Again, if you are new with us, um, would you just let us know you're here and text the word GREET to 97000. <laughs> that just lets us know you are new and that we would like to say hi back to you. And then if you are joining us online, if you would just uh, subscribe to our YouTube page, then that lets other people know that uh, about our content and to join us online. And so normally we have connect groups following the service because it's Mother's Day. We're saying 
saying, go spend the day with your family. So we won't have connect groups today, but we will on Wednesday, normal time, normal places. Um, I think that's everything. Moms, pick up a journal on your way out the door. And um, I, I think we have enough for all the women. We have actually a really good turnout today. If not, here's the deal. If you are a regular, I'll just make sure we have enough for those of you who know you're going to be here next week. And if we find out that it's not enough, I'll make sure we get enough for everybody. Okay? Sound good? I love to make sure everyone gets blessed. All right. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you here next week, 1030 online and in service. God bless. Have a wonderful week. Happy Mother's Day.